do I really want to make a video about this? The RTX 5050. Have you seen what people are saying about it online? And to be honest, I had exactly the same view. And when I had the chance to review one of those, I thought, I'm just going to test it anyway and see what happens. I'll let the results speak for themselves because what I wanted to do is test it against the competition. I mean, these are roughly about the same price. The question is, which one should you get, especially as a creator? I found out and now I'm going to tell you. Ah, it's so annoying. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the code TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here or the one you're watching. Click yeah. in the link on the video description, add the Windows 11 CD product to the card, proceed to checkout, add the code TN20 for the extra discount. So what the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22. <laughs> yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Oh, well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide, so go check out uh, other products, maybe like Microsoft Office. So, here is the card. This is the Zotac one that I have. This is the Twin Edge. A very small form factor, as you can see, two slots, low profile. If you're looking at it compared to the Asus RX 7600, then you can see that the Asus one is actually thicker, slightly shorter, but it's about the same. We've got one eight pin PCIe power connector in there and some usual decent ports in the back, three display ports and one HDMI. Now, the other cards that I have available in my kind of lineup is I've got the 5060 Ti. So I want to compare what exactly is different compared to the 5060 Ti versus the RTX 5050 in terms of specs. Let's have a look at under the hood, what's the difference? So as you can see, the GPU we're using GB207 die. The die size is marginally smaller, in fact. The CUDA cores, there's almost half of the CUDA cores that we have on the 5060 Ti. So quite a bit lower. Tensor cores 80 from 144. RT cores 20. We've got GDDR6, not 7 anymore. The video memory is 8 gigabytes and 128 bit bus, which is probably not so impressive. And the memory bandwidth is 320 gigabytes per second. PCIe Gen 5 X8 interface. The cache is lower, basically half of what you get for the 5060 Ti. So everything looks not very impressive at the moment. So my test bench setup for this is the i9-12900K Asus Strix Z690D4 motherboard with 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB 3600 MHz CL18, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360mm AIO, Samsung 980 Pro 1TB SSD and the Be Quiet Pure Power 1200 watt power supply. And the cards we're comparing in this comparison is the 5050, the Intel Arc B580, and the Asus Radeon RX 7600. So one from AMD, one from Intel, one from Nvidia, and then also another one from Nvidia, which is the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte version, to see how much better is the 5060 Ti. I know there's 5060 as well, but I don't have that one. So Geekbench 6, what I can see here is that the B580 is actually about 4% faster in OpenCL and 30% faster in the Vulcan scores. 5060 Ti is literally 50 roughly percent faster than the 5050, which just makes that the 5050 is about 5050 of the 5060. Ti. Okay, that's a dad joke. Stop it, it's not funny. Our RX 7600 is 13% lower in the OpenCL and about 10% faster in the Vulcan scores. I mean, at this point, it's still not impressive. I don't know about you, but I'd kind of agree with the rest of the market, if that makes sense. The story is not complete. Looking at AI performance, Arc B580, again, about 28% faster in the single, about 3% faster in half, and 7.7% faster in quantized. 5060 Ti loads faster, 28 to 38% faster in the single half and quantized scores. And then the RX 7600 is actually faster as well. 
about 15% faster than the single, half is a bit slower, about 25% slower, and the quantized cost is about 22% faster. Again, pretty impressive on uh, the rest of the lineup apart from the 50-50. Let's take a look at some photo editing. Adobe Photoshop, comparing it to the 50-50, there is really not a big difference at all. The Arc is about 2% faster, the 50-60 Ti is about 1% faster, so about the same, and the 7600 is about 4% slower. So the Radiant falls behind a little bit, but it's not a big difference really there at all. But then moving on to video editing, to really see how those 50 series encoders, decoders actually work. Because perhaps that is why you want this as a video editor. Because the 5050 has one encoder and one decoder, the same amazing ones that the rest of the lineup has. So if you want to work with 422 10-bit, H.264 or 5, then this guy decodes it hardware accelerated better than 4090 better than any other GPU out there, apart from the 50 series, if that makes sense. In fact, there's no other hardware that can do that, what this 5050 does. But what about the actual benchmarks then? Let's take a look. The ARC P50 doesn't actually complete the extended scores, but the standard overall score is about 7% slower. Looking at the raw score, it's like about 30% slower. Interframe is the only one that's faster on the ARC. So working with ProRes, for example, is about 5% faster on the ARC. Looking at the 5060Ti, that's about 10 to 12 11.5% faster, something like that, in the overall scores. But if you look at the GPU effects, they're 30% faster. And even the ARC is about 9% faster in the GPU scores. And ARC is not impressive at the GPU scores whatsoever. And then the 7600 is about 17 to 22% slower in the overall scores. So the 5050 here is actually impressive against these two cards, depending on which codex you work with, but it's quite impressive. What about After Effects? Obviously, I'm not sure who does After Effects with such low-end GPUs, but hey, there are people that need to start from somewhere. The B580 is about 28 to 30% slower in the overall scores. 3D standard is 61% slower. It's embarrassing. The 5060 Ti is about 3 to 5% faster. So in After Effects, perhaps this 5060 Ti doesn't matter at all. The 7600 is about 35 to 32% slower. Interestingly, the 2D standard is 30% faster, but at the same time, 3D standard is 70% faster, slower, and then the 3D extended is 66% slower. That's quite embarrassing for AMD. So the 5050, even in After Effects, looks quite impressive. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and the B580 just doesn't like running DaVinci Resolve. Even though there's 12 gigs of VRAM, that could be a big benefit in on this table because the Venture Resolve loves to use VRAM. It just, for my benchmarking, it just doesn't work as well. I don't know if it's the benchmark, but actually the software should run. And when I'm opening the software without the benchmark, it's fine. As long as I run the benchmark, <laughs> It just goes kaboof. So the 5050 doesn't complete the extended scores, but the standard scores, it does. And with that, looking at the standard overall scores, the 5060 Ti is about 14.7% faster. So it is quite a bit. At the same time, think about the pricing, which we'll talk about in a minute. The 7600 is 17% slower in the standard overall scores. So that's quite a big, nice win for the 5050. Moving on to 3D, and this is... Again, where NVIDIA doesn't have any competition. AMD doesn't support as many 3D applications, neither does Intel. In fact, Intel's the most behind in the 3D race here. But there are a few benchmarks that we can compare, for example, Blender. And looking at that, well, again, the competition isn't very impressive. The ARC B580 is about 31 to 38% slower, depending whether you're running Monster Junk Shop or Classroom Scenes. The 5060 Ti is between 50 to 60% faster actually in these, so huge jump in terms of 3D performance. And then the 7600 is 50 to 60% slower than the 5050, which again in 3D is not impressive for AMD, neither for Intel. But there's the likes of Octane Bench Redshift that Intel doesn't support. Yes, Redshift is supported on the AMD, but is nowhere near as impressive as on the RTX 5050. 
So the 50-50 starts to make a little bit more sense. And finally, V-Ray, looking at that difference, ARC and AMD not supported in there, but the 50-60 Ti is about 51% faster in the CUDA and about 34% faster in the RTX cores. So not impressive against the 50-60 Ti, but compared to competition, wipes them out in 3D. And finally, looking at the power of the draw, the 5050 only pulls 130 watts. It's very conservative, and you can cool that with a potato, throw any slime at it, and it's basically cool. The B580 is pulling 152, which is a bit more. The 5060 Ti is pulling 180, which again is quite a bit more. And then the 7600 is pulling roughly 135. So that is basically the same as the 5050. Now, that being said, I realized that the 5050 is not as bad as people think, especially when you're looking at content creation on the very low end. The same cards for their similar same price, because some of these cards are actually more expensive than the 5050. In fact, the B580 is more expensive than the 5050 right now when I'm looking at it. Go check out the links in the video description below, and I'd love to know what the pricing is like for you when you're watching this for your regions or wherever you're watching this from. But right now I'm seeing that the 5050 is impressive in terms of price and performance. When looking at Photoshop, there's no real difference in neither of these cards. When looking at video editing, the 5050 pulls ahead a lot. And bear in mind, these benchmarks for video editing didn't actually showcase the full utilization of hardware for the 10-bit 422 H.264, yes, four and five, which the 5050 can do and the others can't do, which makes this very, very interesting budget end video editing card for a lot of creators. Now, the B580 is not bad either. It doesn't support H.264 10-bit 422, but it does support H.265 10-bit 422, which AMD doesn't. So I would say Nvidia first, then Intel, and then AMD in terms of codec acceleration. And with that 5050, you don't need to pair your CPU with Intel because Intel QuickSync doesn't offer you anything extra that the 5050 already doesn't offer you. So video editing, that's impressive in there. And then finally, 3D. When looking at 3D again, the competition just falls apart. There isn't the, anything available for the latest thing out there or for that similar price point. It's more expensive and worse, so Nvidia again wins. And then finally, the price point then. Looking at the price point, this card is supposed to be around $250. In fact, I can find it $250 on Amazon. Don't believe me, go check out the links in the video description below. Whereas the competition, they need to lower the pricing in order to compete with this one. Now, would I want this to have more VRAM than eight gigabytes? Absolutely. Would I want this card to be even faster? Absolutely. Do I think that Nvidia kind of underplayed this card? and they should have made it a bit faster. When looking at other competition, NVIDIA didn't have to. And we can't blame NVIDIA for that, because why compete with yourself if you can already win against the competition? It's simple. This card actually makes sense for creators. Hate me or not? Disagree with me in the comment section below? I'd love to know what you think. If you enjoyed this type of video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. By the way, if you do want to reach out, I'll always get back to my Minect messages within 24 hours. So links in the description below where you can find some build guides and other videos on the channel as well. Thanks for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.